A big cost of living adjustment, otherwise known as COLA raise, is a really good thing for Social Security beneficiaries, right? Well, not so fast. We're actually going to be discussing this in much more detail right here in this video, so let's get into it right away. But really fast before we do, thank you so much for joining me. If you're new here or if you haven't done so yet, make sure to subscribe by hitting that button right down below the video, as I am your one and only daily advocate, and I am very much dedicated to you and this community to do all the research and to break it all down into these short videos so that you can stay updated with all this information as it is hitting the wire each and every day. It's a busy time out there there, so if you haven't done so yet, make sure to subscribe down below. It's totally free to do so, and so you don't miss any updates going forward. All right, thanks again. Let's jump right into the update here. So I do completely recognize that a lot of you right here in this community do receive a fixed income monthly benefit from Social Security, whether it's retirement, disability, SSDI, survivors, SSI, or VA benefits, all of which get to enjoy the annual cost of living adjustment. Now, is this raise an actual good thing? It completely depends on who you ask. Some people say, yes, I love the annual cost of living adjustment. I love the raise to my monthly benefits. And some people say, no, I do not like it. It is a detriment to my benefits. And I wanna explain this a little bit more detail right here in this video. There's multiple reasons why the COLA raise is good, but at the same time, there's also multiple reasons why the COLA raise is probably not actually the best thing in the world. So let's quickly jump into this and talk through multiple different reasons right here in this video. So first off, let's quickly talk about the obvious reasons why the COLA raise isn't exactly the best thing in the world. Now, don't get me wrong. A raise to benefits is always a great thing, but the problem is alongside the raise because of the cost of living adjustment, there's also some other adverse effects as a result of a raise to your monthly benefits. All right, so like I said, let's get into the obvious reasons first here. Number one is as you get a raise to your annual um, or your monthly benefits, it actually does raise your annual income. Therefore, as you raise your annual income as a beneficiary of all those benefits I mentioned just a minute ago, a lot of times it also does reduce your other benefits that you may be receiving from SNAP benefits, for example, as in Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. Some people call it food stamps, but essentially it is food assistance. Now, we all talk about this every single year we go through this and we all experience this. For those of you receiving SNAP benefits, unfortunately, as your income rises because of your annual cost of living adjustment, therefore, the SNAP program reassesses your situation and says, hey, you got a raise. We might as well take some of your benefits away. Not a good thing, right? So that is reason number one. Next on my list is the annual cost of living adjustment is pegged off of inflation. If the raise comes in really big, that also means that the cost of living is also very high because of inflation. Again, not such a good thing, right? It just means that we're paying more out there for the same old things that we've always been buying because inflation has driven prices higher. Therefore, they need to adjust the cost of living adjustment even higher to account for that um, actual cost of living. So that's another reason. Next, the annual cost of living adjustment historically does not even keep up with what inflation is actually doing. For example, right here in 2022, the annual cost of living adjustment that you got and all the beneficiaries got this year was 5.9%. Well, as according to the most recent inflation data, we're behind the curve by about 3% as of right now. We should be pushing about 8.9% for a raise as of right now. So as you can see, we're already 3% behind and we're only a handful of months into the year so far. So you can see it's not really keeping up with real inflation and it's only adjusted once per year. They should maybe do quarterly adjustments to the annual cost of living adjustment rather than just once annually. But of course, everything is structured in such a way that is beneficial to the program, not necessarily beneficial to the beneficiaries. Make sense? <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? So that's another reason. Next, I quickly wanna talk about Medicare Part B. Again, as inflation continues to move higher, we also know that Medicare Part B premiums are also pegged off of inflation. Therefore, as inflation moves higher and the cost of living adjustment is moved higher because of inflation, 
Medicare also adjusts higher because they say, hey, inflation is hot, therefore we got to adjust the benefit um, and the premium significantly higher as well. Just like this year, 14.5% historic raise to the Medicare Part B premium. So these are some of the most obvious reasons. Now, again, I can point this out as well, but I think this kind of goes hand in hand with the reduction to the SNAP benefits. But of course, if you're somebody receiving uh, maybe utility assistance or maybe any other programs like housing assistance or literally any other types of state programs or federal programs that help you in any way financially. Again, they may look at it and say, hey, your income went up, therefore we don't need to give you as much assistance, right? Well, yeah, that's probably not the case. I mean, obviously everybody needs more assistance, but again, that's just the logic behind it because they have a lot of different rules and parameters around income and all kinds of different things. So therefore, as income goes up, a lot of times they look at it and say, well, your income went up, therefore we don't need to give you as much assistance, right? Well, I think all of us probably disagree with that. All right, so anyway, let's get into some of the other hidden reasons. It's again, not necessarily hidden, but it's more like reasons under the hood that we don't exactly look at all that closely, but these are some big reasons why a big raise to social security as a result of the cost of living adjustment may not be the best thing in the world. All right, so I do have a number of reasons why here as well. So let me work, uh, work through these reasons as well. So as of right now, according to the most recent reports, the labor participation rate in this country is a little over 60%. Let me tell you what that means. All of the adults in the United States, all adults in the United States, about six out of 10 Americans, American adults right now, are working. Therefore, four out of every 10 people are not working. It's not necessarily means that they're unemployed, just means that four out of, out of, sorry, four out of every 10 people are not working. Therefore, that just means less people paying into social security through payroll taxes. Well, we already know the insolvency issues out there right now with social security that they are, uh, that they are facing in a matter of about 10 years or so, the insolvency situation. Well, at this time, we also recognize that 10,000 people are becoming eligible for social security benefits every single day. Therefore, that also means about 10,000 people are potentially dropping out of the workforce as in retiring. If that happens to be you, congratulations. Uh, it's been a long time coming, right? <laughs> yeah, very exciting. So if that happens to be you, a huge congratulations. I'm very happy for you. But the matter is right now, a lot of people are getting into the, the, the time of their life where they're starting to retire. 10,000 people per day are becoming eligible for social security benefits. Well, what's that gonna do? It's a two-fold effect. Number one, it's 10,000 potential more beneficiaries every single day for social security, and it's 10,000 less people paying in through social security taxes. You kind of get what I'm saying here? The Social Security Trust Fund is kind of getting like a double whammy, right? Less money coming in, more money going out, right? So once again, tending to lead toward the problems of insolvency with the program. So that is something else that is also going on right now. One more thing I wanna point out as well in this uh, same kind of realm of kind of potential difficulties coming up here is, as I talked about in the previous video earlier, is as the United States is basically on the cliff of a massive recession, in the event that this actually does happen going forward, and here's the deal, a lot of the people out there, the experts, the analysts, the big Wall Street people out there, they watch all this stuff very closely, they're predicting the likelihood of a recession to be very, very high. Well, we know what happens in the, in the form of recession. A lot of companies close down, they start to restrict, they start to um, kind of um, close you know, some of the different branches that they have, they start laying people off, essentially bankruptcies, all kinds of different things that start to happen. Well, as a result of that, once again, 10,000 people are retiring every day, less payroll taxes coming in, and all of a sudden, if we hit a recession, that means potentially who knows how many people may be out of a job, as in laid off, as in unemployed, as in bankruptcies across companies, all kinds of different things. That just means less people pay, uh, paying in, once again, through social security taxes, therefore continuing to make the, uh, the solvency or insolvency issue with social security even greater, right? So something else that may be coming relatively quickly. So we gotta watch that very closely. Next, I wanna throw this out there as well. 
in the event of a massive cost of living adjustment, which again, for 2023, according to where we are going right now, the trajectory, sorry, the trajectory of inflation as of right now, and where it's likely going to be in a couple months from now, as they start to gather the samples of inflation data, July, August, and September of this year, which will peg the cost of living adjustment for next year. When the cost of living adjustment is actually bumped up by, let's just call it 9%, if that's actually what it happens to be, it could be more, it could be a little bit less, but let's just call it 9% for easy math purposes in this video. Here's the thing. If they add an additional 9% cost of living adjustment or raise to all the beneficiaries, about 65 to 70 million beneficiaries across the board, that just means it's more money going out of the trust fund every single month. That's a lot of extra money. And therefore, the money coming into this uh, into the trust fund is pretty much static. It's not really changing in a whole big way other than going down each and every month. The reason for that is we're not exactly having a huge surge of more people coming into the workforce and adding more money into the um, uh, into the trust fund through payroll taxes, right? So you kind of see what I'm saying here is we've got basically a static number of payroll taxes going into the, the, the trust fund. And at the same time, we have more people drawing on benefits as well as bigger benefits going out because of a potential massive 9% cost of living adjustment next year, right? So it's like a lot going on right now. So the solvency issue that, the, uh, that Social Security is having with the trust fund is probably gonna be a much bigger issue than what we're actually being led on to believe right now, right now this year. As we continue to work our way through the rest of this year and after we get the announcement for the official cost of living adjustment for 2023, we're probably gonna have to reassess this situation and say, oh wait, the solvency issue that we've been look looking at for a while now, for maybe insolvency in 2033, that's probably gonna be bumped up a few years based on everything that we're seeing as of right now. Um, the labor participation rate, less payroll taxes coming in, more bigger benefits going out, more beneficiaries drawing on benefits, all of that combined equals trust funds being drawn down way faster. So anyway, by all means, the deal is though, if you're retiring or if you're somebody who is disabled or anything like this and you can start drawing on benefits, by all means, you gotta do what's best for you. Seriously, the program is there for you. You've paid in forever, paying in through payroll taxes. Um, you've collected your work credits. You know, you got all the things going on. If that is your situation, you can start drawing on benefits. Again, I don't know your situation, so I can't advise you on what to do here. But the simple matter is, if you're eligible to receive benefits, you may want to start grabbing those benefits. Again, I can't tell you what to do here because I don't know your situation, but my point is um, if you're eligible and you want to start drawing on your benefits, by all means, go at it, grab your benefits. They're for you. You've earned them and that's the deal. So anyway, but it is an issue um, that needs to be addressed and it is something that Congress can fix going forward. It's just a matter of will Congress do it? Of course they will do it, but will they wait till the very last minute like they always do on everything or will they actually get this done relatively quickly before a major, major issue actually comes down on this very essential program, right? Uh, so anyway, a lot of moving parts out there. You can probably see that right here with this video. So anyway, I wanna break this down for you, let you know what's going on out there and some of the major concerns out there with a big, big cola raise. Don't get me wrong, bigger benefits is always nice, but at the end of the day, a bigger benefit may result in kind of um, unforeseen consequences, if you know what I mean by that, right? So anyway, hope this video helps you out. Again, thank you so much for being part of this community. Please make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet. Share this video with your friends, family, social media, and go back and check out any of the other 2,400 videos right here on the channel. Thanks again. I appreciate you. Enjoy your day, and I'll catch you again later in the next video.